The year is 1991. Two former sumo stars are meeting in a pro wrestling ring for the second time in as many days. One is a kind, soft-spoken Canadian whose star is rising in the WWF, John Tenta, better known as Earthquake. The other is a former Yokozuna kicked out of the sport of sumo and fired from New Japan Pro Wrestling, Koji Kitao. 5,000 fans have packed Kobe's World Hall, and they're expecting a clash of super heavyweights. They're expecting lariats and suplexes and fighting spirit comebacks. They're expecting a pro wrestling match. What they got was something very different, a complete fiasco that quickly devolves into a shoot standoff between the rising WWF star and the bad boy of sumo. It ends with Katow in full meltdown mode, exposing the business live on the mic and ultimately disgracing himself. This is the story of John Tenta versus Koji Katow. Before we get into the play-by-play -play of what happened in 1991, let's take a look back at how these two men got there, because you'll soon see they're two very different sides of the same coin. First, Koji Katao. As a young man in the 1980s, he was tapped to become something of a future superstar in the sport of sumo, but ended up with a career marred by controversy instead. His journey in sumo started at 15 years old in 1979. By 1986, he was already promoted to Yokozuna, the highest rank in sumo. And this was at the tender age of 23 without ever actually winning a Makuchi, or top level event. But this historic elevation to Yokozuna was not particularly fruitful for Katao, and his record at that rank would be mediocre at best. Katao's career would really take a nosedive in 1987, after punishing a junior member of his sumo stable, taking it too far, and apparently assaulting him. That led to something of a rebellion from the other junior members, which in turn led to a fight with the stable boss. And there are some truly strange stories about this floating around out there on various MMA and wrestling history articles including that he might have originally been pissed off about how badly his Chonko Nabe dinner was cooked, or even that he was upset over the save data in the game Dragon Quest being deleted from the Sumo Dojo's computer. Yikes. To cap all of this off, Katao then allegedly roughed up the wife of the stable boss when she tried to intervene, thus would end his meteoric rise in the sport of sumo. According to an issue of Sumo Fan Magazine, this disastrous chain of events led him to become the first ever Yokozuna to be expelled by the Sumo Association, and the only Yokozuna to have never won a top division tournament. Post Sumo, Katao entered the world of pro wrestling. After a quick stint wrestling under a mask in the American Wrestling Association, he debuted for New Japan Pro Wrestling in 1990. It took less than a year for him to ruin that opportunity, getting into a heated fight with Booker Ricky Choshu and allegedly using a racial slur relating to Choshu's Korean heritage. But when you're a 6 foot 7, 350 pound former sumo star, you get a lot of second chances. Katao's came in the form of a promotion called Super World Sports, a short lived pro wrestling company founded by another former sumo, Genichiro Tenru. Tenru himself had just left All Japan Pro Wrestling high and dry to form the SWS, with big money backing from a company that made eyeglasses. The SWS in and of itself is a fascinating story, which we'll have to leave for another video. And it's in SWS where he meets a man he can't bully, push around, or take advantage of, John Tenta. Like Katao, Tenta was a sumo athlete in the 1980s. Growing up on the west coast of Canada, he became a national wrestling champion and an NCAA athlete at Louisiana State University. After LSU cut back on their wrestling program, Tenta moved to Japan and joined a sumo stable in 1985. His professional career in sumo lasted just eight months, but in that time, John Tenta became something of a phenomenon. He won all 24 fights he entered 
and earn the in-ring name of Koto Tenzan Toshimitsu, which apparently means Heavenly Mountain Harp. And that's a pretty damn appropriate nickname for John Tenta, if you ask me. But Tenta's career in sumo wasn't without its own controversy either. According to the Canadian newspaper The Globe and Mail, some of his junior ranked sumo peers resented him as an outsider to the sport and for the special treatment they felt he received as a foreigner. And then there was the matter of the tiger tattoo he sported on his left arm. Tattoos were and still are a taboo subject in Japan because of their association with the Yakuza, and he had to cover this up in public at all times. Apparently, Tenta was even ordered to undergo a skin graft to totally remove it. Heavenly Mountain Harp would call it quits after just nine months or so in the sport. The life of an up-and-coming sumo athlete was just too arduous and too constricting for the soft-spoken giant from British Columbia. And from what we know about the world of sumo now, it's not hard to see why. Sumo stable dojos are notorious for brutalizing their trainees, and the world of sumo is rife with scandals, allegations of all kinds of abuse and violence. It's just a damn hard life to live if you're not on top. Tenta was heavily criticized in the Japanese press for bailing out of the sport, but sumo's loss would be pro wrestling's gain. In 1987, he signed with All Japan Pro Wrestling under the guidance of founder and fellow big man Shohei Baba. He dropped a ton of weight and would team with legends like Jumbo Saruda, the great Kabuki, and of course, Baba himself. And he probably would have gone down in history as another one of AJPW's great foreign giants, if he hadn't made the move to WWF in 1989. This is, of course, where most of us know Tenta's work from originally, as Earthquake, one half of the Natural Disasters tag team and the guy who laid out Hulk Hogan on the Brother Love Show. And it was during his time working for the WWF at the height of his career that he first encountered Koji Katao. Genichiro Tenru's SWS had the unique distinction of having a working relationship with Vince McMahon's company. They co-promoted a number of shows together, including a blockbuster Tokyo Dome event in March of 1991, and a smaller event in Kobe under the name Wrestle Dream. That Tokyo Dome show also included an Earthquake vs. Katao match, a pretty decent one too where the WWF star got the win. A few days later in Kobe, fans were treated to such crossover matches as Bret Hart vs. George Takano, Randy Savage vs. Tenru, Hulk Hogan taking on Yoshiaki Yatsu, and John Tenta vs. Koji Katao once again. And in that match, things start off pretty normal. A headlock, a test of strength, and a waist lock. You can certainly sense some resistance and uncooperativeness from Katao, especially when he's in that waist lock where it looks like he's legitimately trying to break it and resisting Tenta's cues to throw him. Tenta does manage to throw the former Yokozuna from the waistlock position, and it looks like he had to just deadlift him to do it. Katao does not appear to be cooperating at all, and frankly, he gets manhandled. Once on the ground, Tenta stays on Katao, floating over to his back and putting his considerable weight on him. Remember, at one point, Tenta clocked in at over 450 pounds. Katao manages to slip under the ropes and out of the ring and it's here that he snaps. He grabs one of those long, thin tables they use at Japanese events and hurls it at the ring. The crowd starts booing him loudly. Now just imagine what a hothead like Katao is feeling at this point. He just lost a worked match to a foreign sumo below him in rank. He's about to lose this one, and the crowd in his home country are booing him out of the building. They do another very lackluster test of strength in the middle of the ring, and Katao all of a sudden grabs Tenta's arm and locks it, maybe trying for a Fujiwara armbar. And this is the exact moment where a stiff but worked match turns into something potentially real and potentially dangerous. Tenta smacks the former Yokozuna, escapes the hold attempt, and things get real tense real fast. The two men circle each other. Tenta tries to initiate some kind of pro wrestling action, and Katao makes out like he's gonna shoot kick him. The crowd starts chanting Tenta's name, and Big John is pissed. 
There's a stare down between the two former sumos that even 30 years later, you can feel through the screen. The referee, who is comically tiny when compared to these two guys, tries to get something going, but neither Katao or Tenta move a muscle. There's some jockeying for position and Katao starts throwing kicks. He runs Tenta into the corner and puts his hands around his throat. The referee desperately throws himself between them to stop the exchange, and they go back to that stare down. Katao raises his right hand and sticks out two fingers, like he's signaling he wants to attack Tenta's eyes. And at first glance, this gesture might look a little silly, like something that's more at home in comedy wrestling. But John Tenta is taking it very seriously. Katao actually tries a strike with this, whether it's legitimate or he's just trying to make a mockery of this pro wrestling match. Tenta dodges it and starts yelling at him. It's hard to make it out exactly, but it sure sounds like he's saying, you wanna fucking try that shit with me? Tenta's fist is now up and cocked back, and all pretense of a choreographed professional wrestling match is now long gone. Another intense stare down ensues as the men circle each other and the crowd gets louder and louder. Then comes the best part of this entire fiasco. John Tenta screams at Katao loud enough for the cameras to hear, who do you think you are? This is pro wrestling. The way this match ends is not something you see on the commercial release of the tape. In most versions, they abruptly cut away from it and go to a graphic announcing Earthquake as the winner. And the reasons for this are about to become obvious. Katao has his hands on his hips at this point, and it looks like he's just given up on trying to hurt John Tenta. So that ref comes up and tries to scold him for what's been happening. Katao gives him a kick to the back, and the guy literally goes flying. Now, maybe the ref was overselling this a bit, but then again, Katao's legs are literally larger and heavier than this entire human being, so who knows? The boos rain down from the stands, and now they sound angry. The bell rings, Katao gets disqualified, and sulks out of the ring to a deafening chorus of angry fans throwing garbage. He goes right for the microphone at ringside, grabs it, and guess what he decides to say? According to various fan translations online, he goes on an expletive-laden rant, insulting Tenta, insulting the fans, and saying wrestling is fake. In terms of the immediate aftermath, Katao allegedly held a full-on tantrum in the back. That's according to the MMA history buffs at Kakatogi Road. This tantrum may have even involved hurling a chair at the wife of SWS's big financial backer. That's according to a vlog from Masakatsu Funaki, as translated by Cameron Lee from Pro Wrestling Only. Now, if that's true, this would be the second boss's wife that Katao assaulted. Unsurprisingly, he was fired from SWS and became even more maligned by the general public than he was before. This would not be his last ride in pro wrestling, though. And let's just say that karma was coming for Koji Katao. More on that in a minute. But first, let's talk about why this match devolved into such a mess. Usually, when it comes to pro wrestling matches that turn into shoots or uncooperative standoffs like this, there's always the question of why. And it's not always easy to answer. The parties involved don't often say much, there's a language barrier when it comes to any official news reports, and much of what we have to go off ends up being rumors and inside sources. In this case, though, the reason is pretty obvious. Koji Katao was frankly a notorious jerk. He was expelled from sumo for abusing trainees and allegedly hitting a woman. He was fired from New Japan for racial abuse and unprofessional conduct, and now thousands of his countrymen were booing him as he lost worked fights to a former sumo competitor below him in that sport's extremely hierarchical pecking order. There is, however, at least one other wrinkle here as well. According to an issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter from the time, the SWS booker, the Great Kabuki, may have played a part in instigating things. Katao's version of the whole situation is that it was Kabuki who pushed Tenta to work stiff and sort of stoked the fires between them in the hopes that something would happen, which of course it did. 
Now, if you've watched this far in the video, I've got a treat for you. A year after being fired from the SWS, Katow showed up in Nobuhiko Takata's UWFI, a shoot-style promotion that was the latest successor to the UWF legacy. Katow, while away from pro wrestling, had apparently gone and trained in some sort of karate. In the main event of a UWFI show at the Nippon Budokan, in front of 16,000 fans, Katow comes face to face with Takata himself in a pseudo MMA style match. And would you like to guess what happened? In the third round, Takata baits Katow into defending a low kick, but instead delivers a crisp strike to the chin. It knocks Katow out cold, and Takata wins the match. What I'm trying to say here is that 99% of the match was likely a work, but the kick was not. It was a double cross. And even though John Tenta is not involved here, nor are any of the people from Sumo or New Japan, you can't help but think this is some serious karma for Koji Katao. If you're looking for an epilogue to this epilogue, it does seem like Katao and John Tenta eventually came to terms, at least on business. They had one more singles match together, five years later in WAR a match that Katow won in 7 minutes and 20 seconds, almost the exact same match time as their 1991 meeting, which was 7 minutes and 19 seconds. 